Body of the Iceberg continued. Dragon Ball Evolution and James Marsters In 2009, a live-action movie by 20th Century Fox was released. It combined the Pilaf and the King Piccolo saga, starring Justin Chadwick as Son Goku, Emi Rosum as Bulma, Choi Young-Fat as Roshi, and James Marsters as King Piccolo. It was reviled by critics and audiences, but that's not really why we're talking about this. Obviously, we're talking about Dragon Ball Evolution, considered by a lot of fans to be the single worst movie ever made. But we've said enough about the negativity that came from this movie. I want to talk about James Marsters, because Marsters was a fan of the show, and probably because of that, the best part of the movie. In fact, he was the reason Piccolo was green at all, as originally, he was going to just be grey. Later on, James Marsters went on to play Zamazu in the Dragon Ball Super English dub. However, he didn't use his real name, because this was a non-union gig. Chris Sabat was doing a Q&A at Fan Expo Canada when James Marsters arrived. The two talked about Dragon Ball Evolution and how it was all bad and stuff, and proceeded to tell a story about Sean Shenmue meeting with James Masters at a convention, and about how him and his son spent a lot of time watching Dragon Ball in order to prepare for the role of Piccolo in Dragon Ball Evolution. And I'm like, would you ever be interested in working on Dragon Ball? And he was like, oh, yeah, I would, except I'm in the union, so I can't really be on the show because it's a non-union show. He goes, but... If you didn't pay me, and I did it for free, I could do it. So James Marsters did the entire role of Zamasu in Dragon Ball Super for free as a way to redeem himself with the Dragon Ball Z community. I'm Give so James sorry. Marsters a round of applause. And he I was love you. You are the best Piccolo on the planet. <laughs> I personally love James Marsters, as Buffy the Vampire Slayer is one of my favorite shows. Hikari no Willpower Hikari no Willpower, in English, The Light's Willpower, was a song composed by Kenji Yamamoto for the PlayStation 2 game Ultimate Battle 22, and later Final Bout. It served as Future Trunks' theme, with the track taking a life of its own, as it was given a vocal version by Hironobu Kageyama. It's incredible, and has even been seen in other video games. It may be weird to highlight this song in particular, but this is one of the few I see talked about the most, even outside of the sub-only fandom. Kai the manga cut means no boo. There was a rumor during Kai's airing that Dragon Ball Kai represented the manga Toriyama cut of Dragon Ball and the fact that the Buu saga was not going to be covered meant Toriyama did not consider it canon. Obviously, this was not true, ever, and the Buu saga would be eventually covered. Copy Vegeta dub voice For the English dub of the Copy Vegeta arc, a special voice actor was brought in to voice Copy Vegeta. He was voiced by Brian Drummond, the ocean dub voice of Vegeta. His voice was the Vegeta voice many grew up hearing in the early Dragon Ball Z dub, and his over 9,000 light delivery was the one that first sparked up the meme online. We would rule the planet! and you could have anything you wanted. Anything. It's more than just looks. I possess all of your energy and fighting skills. I am now the only Vegeta in the universe. God Hierarchy Dragon Ball has an interesting God Hierarchy, as it seems to be ever-expanding. To make things simple, I will describe the hierarchy starting with Earth. We begin with a higher God, such as King Kai, sending an attendant to Earth in order to assist the overseeing of life forms. These attendants help select a local to become God. In Earth's case, Mr. Popo and Master Karin were both sent to Earth for this purpose. Later, Kami was chosen as God of Earth. When a person dies, they are sent to Otherworld, where they are judged by Enma Daiyosama, or King Yama, who chooses heaven or hell for them. Above Yama's power, there are four cardinal gods, the Kaios. Earth is in the North King Kai's sector. They answer to the Dai Kaio, the Grand Kai. Above even him, there are four Kaioshin, one for each of the directions, overseen by the Dai Kaioshin, or the Grand Supreme Kai. It is worth noting that other universes seem to only have one Kaioshin each, unlike Universe 7, which had five. Four of them were removed by Boo, leaving only Shin. Shin has an attendant named Kibito, and later a Kaioshin of old was found locked away in the Sea Sword. Even so, as of now, Shin seems to be the only true Kaioshin of Universe 7. Toriyama revealed in the super exciting guide that Kaioshin and Kaios are born from the Kaiju tree, sprouting like fruits from it. Golden fruits
fruits are Kaioshin and regular fruits are Kaios. There is a possibility for a Kaio to be promoted to Kaioshin, as Zamasu was going to be. Regardless, the Kaioshin oversee life across the universe and put into motion the events for new planets to be created. To balance the act of creation, there are gods of destruction put in place. These gods of destruction are linked to the Kaioshin's life, meaning if one dies, so does the other. Universe 7's god of destruction is Lord Beerus. They are seemingly chosen from across the universe's population and aren't born into it like the Kaioshin. For example, Topo has been chosen as the god of destruction after Belmont. In order to do their job, an angel attendant is assigned to each god of destruction. Angels are the children of the Grand Priest, who serves as the right hand of Zeno, the ultimate deity over all 12 universes. He has two attendant bodyguards by his side. Following the Goku Black Arc, another Zeno lives in the main timeline, as Goku brought him from Trunks' deleted reality. I will say that in the Dai Zenshu, Akira Toriyama himself is said to be the ruler of everything. There are other gods outside the main series, such as the Kaioshin of Time. The current one is Kronoa, who was originally a Kaioshin who was tasked with raising Tokitoki's egg alongside Mekikabura, who betrayed her. She sealed Mekikabura away, as well as banished his ally, Demigra. Kronoa was granted the role of the Kaioshin of Time thanks to her actions, following Eos. There are also anime-only gods such as Anin, the overseer of the Furnace of the Eight Divinations. Original Broadcast Audio if you've ever watched the old Dragon Ball series in Japanese, then you know that while it has great performances, the audio quality is atrocious, completely subpar compared to what we expect today. <laughs> Many think this is because of the age of the show, but that's just not the case. There has been high-quality Dragon Ball audio floating around in the form of drama cassette tapes, which were cassettes released back in the day, with audio from the episodes, and VHS recordings from fans, which exhibited higher fidelity than what the official releases were giving us. The reason we never got this was because Toei likely got rid of the original audio. Remember, back in the day, everything was stored in physical tapes, which were expensive to store if you weren't doing anything with them. To them, the series was over, and the idea of releasing it for home media was really a new concept. The only audio Toei had was optical audio, stored in the film of the show, which, just like the image, has aged. Fans took it upon themselves to collect VHS audio of the original broadcast. On June 21st, 2017, a user named Sara Chikorita uploaded all of the Z's broadcast audio online. It's worth noting that Toei has used higher quality audio for Dragon Ball GT in the past, when it comes to broadcasting it, but for some reason, none of the home releases have this. Either way, GT doesn't have the same issues of it being completely lost, like Z's was. It was offered up to Toei, but sadly, they turned it down. Thankfully, Chris Sabat of Funimation showed interest, and they currently have it, but they haven't done anything with it. Dragon Ball was different from Z, as it was much harder to track down because of the series' age. But on March 11, 2020, the full series broadcast audio was uploaded online. Which brings us to awesome French Blu-ray release. AB Group released a new Blu-ray set of the original Dragon Ball anime at the end of last year, and it turned out to be the best release of the anime ever. Not only is the image amazing, using an upscaled version of the Dragon Boxes with the colors corrected manually, but it also has the original broadcast audio, which was collected by fans over the years. This is the only release with the broadcast audio, and I cannot believe it's out there. It sounds beautiful. Hopefully, AB Group will continue to release the rest of the series. And perhaps we can use this version for future releases here in the States and all over the world. Galena, Prometheus, Kane, and the Navigator in 2018, a new Shonen Jump crossover game was released, Jump Force. In it, the real world is attacked by villains from different manga series, led by Galena and Kane. Director Glover brings together the Jump heroes to defeat their enemies. However, Glover had been pulling the strings behind it all, revealed to be the villain Prometheus. Thankfully, the player character alongside Naruto, Goku, and Luffy defeat Prometheus after he defeats Kane and Galena. The villains for this game, and your little quest navigator friend, were all designed by Akira Toriyama. Most people hate this game. I I thought the story mode was kind of fun, <laughs> and I liked the villains. Bulma's first appearance. Bulma's first animated appearance was not in Dragon Ball. It was actually in the Urusei Yatsura movie 3, Remember My Love. She's only there for a few seconds. The world of Dragon Ball Z. It tries to bring them together again.
This was a special narrator by Chris Sabat. It was included in DVDs of the Cell Saga Funimation dub. It recaps the story up to the arrival of Trunks. The Dragon Ball sections of it uses the BLT dub, a company which Funimation worked alongside to dub the first 13 episodes of Dragon Ball, as well as the first movie, back in 1995, years before Funimation would go back and redub the series themselves. It actually only covers the first Dragon Ball arc, because the rest weren't dubbed. So, right after describing his adventures with Bulma and him meeting Chi Chi, Goku suddenly has Gohan and we move on to the Saiyan arc. From the Saiyan arc to the Frieza saga, the Ocean dub and the Funimation in house dubbed are switched in between, so there's a lot of weird times where Goku sounds completely different. Craft DVD in the early 2000s, a promotion was ran alongside Craft Dinner that gave kids a DVD with a 20-minute World of DBZ special mentioned above, as well as a single episode, the mythical Goku and Piccolo get their driving license episode. Dragon Ball Journeys a Target exclusive DVD from 2004. It's quite strange. It contained the last episode of Dragon Ball Z and the first episode of GT. Well, the first Funimation episode of GT, which I'll talk about later on. It also included an episode of Yu Yu Hakusho and some advertisements for games and VHSs. Fast Food Collaborations Dragon Ball has had a huge amount of collaborations with food-related items, most notably Burger King, McDonald's, KFC, stuff like that. I plan on doing a deeper dive on this on a separate video, but here's a start. In 2001, Burger King ran a promotion in the United States where you could get a Dragon Ball figure in every Big Hits meal. They were simple, small, plastic statues that came with trading cards. You could get Goku, Super Saiyan Goku, Frieza, Vegeta, Gohan, Krillin, and Piccolo. If you sent in 5 proofs of purchase, you could receive a VHS with 2 episodes of the Frieza Saga. Later in 2002, another promotion was ran. This time you could get Krillin, Gohan Cooler, Piccolo, and Super Saiyan Goku. Finally, in 2003, Dragon Ball toys were paired with the Powerpuff Girls. As you would get one of each. You could even get some promo codes to watch some episodes online. The DBZ toys this time were Super Saiyan Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, and Super 13. Super Android 13 had actually just come out earlier that same month, February 2003, in the USA. Funny enough, that wouldn't be the last time Burger King would pair those two franchises together, as in 2020, Burger King Brazil released a Dragon Ball Super figure line alongside figures from the rebooted Powerpuff Girls. You could get Golden Frieza, Goku, Vegeta, and Jiren. As far as McDonald's goes, in 2006, Japanese McDonald's released four Dragon Ball toys in their Happy Meals, Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, and Gohan with a sword. In 2007, a set of spin toys were released, featuring Boo, Vegito, Gotenks, and Goku. In 2008, a set of box dioramas were released, with Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Angel Goku. In 2009, a bunch of Blast toys were released. Starting in 2011 onwards, McDonald's has periodically released exclusive Dragon Ball Heroes cards. In 2017, in collaboration with Dragon Dragon Ball Super, McDonald's released toys featuring Goku, Vegeta, Gotenks, Shenron, and Future Trunks. In 2003, Coca-Cola Japan released dozens of Dragon Ball minifigures which came attached to the bottles. They even had a Kamehameha collection exclusive for Family Mart. Later in 2009, Coca-Cola will release even more, this time themed after the Tonkobon spine art. For KFC, in order to celebrate Battle of Gods, KFC Japan put out this magnificent commercial, which I'm sure you've seen. KFC released different waves of gifts for the movie. The main one was a set of Dragon Ball Z light-up bottles. They also released gifts for their kids' meal, predominantly featuring Goten and Trunks, mini board games and playing cards for parents to play with their kids, and finally, a school-themed set with school supplies. At the time, you could also spot Colonel Sanders cosplaying as Goku and holding a four-star Dragon Ball. Going back in time, but to another part of the world, in 2006, McDonald's France released toys, a DVD, and even an LCD game for Dragon Ball Z. In 2009, in Latin America and Germany, Burger King released a set of Dragon Ball Evolution toys to Goku's Bulma, Chi Chi, Mai, and Piccolo. They also came with stickers for the movie's Panini sticker book. In Australia, Burger King is known as Hungry Jack. I couldn't figure out the exact date, but these figures were strange to say the least. They were based around the Boo Saga with some interesting choices for characters. They were busts of Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan Gohan, which is fine, great even, but the other two were Hibito and Grey Boo. Huh. Okay, there have been, of course, dozens of other Dragon Ball collaborations with food items, but I don't have the time to cover them all. I don't even know if I could find them all, but I will do a deeper dive in a video later down the line. 2008 Jump Anime Tour Special 
For the 40th weekly Shonen Jump anniversary, a Dragon Ball anime special, alongside its manga adaptation, was released. It was named Yo Son Goku and His Friends Return. It is about Mr. Satan opening a hotel, but celebrations are interrupted when Vegeta's brother, Tarbo, arrives with the warnings of Avo and Kado arriving on Earth. Two Frieza Force soldiers that could rival Frieza's strength. It features a new rendition of Chala Hechala with the Buu Saga characters and with its manga adaptation being drawn by Naho Ishii. Neither Tien nor Chaozu appear in the anime, likely because Tien's voice actor passed away before the special. They also released a DVD of it. It came with a cool folder and a postcard. Real 4D and Real 4D at the Super Tenkaichi Budokai. These were 4D attractions at Universal Studios Japan as part of a summer Shonen Jump themed event. The first one featured Goku, Vegeta, Krillin and others fighting Frieza on Earth, with the audience lifting their hands up to give Goku energy for the Spirit Bomb. This one was shown from July 1st to September 4th, while the second one is a little more interesting. It had a 2D animated intro, and it followed the story of a special world tournament that is interrupted by Broly. Not Dragon Ball Super Broly, but Z Broly with a new form, God Broly. Goku and Vegeta use their Super Saiyan Blue forms to fight him and protect their friends, while Goku uses Shenron's help to be able to use God Fusion and fuse with the audience into this Gogeta-like form. This one was shown from June 30th, 2017 to October 1st, 2017. Cardass these were trading cards made by Bandai starting in 1991, which you could get from machines at convenience stores, kinda like gacha machines. They were extremely popular and go for a lot of money now. Other series such as Saint Seiya also had their own sets. If you remember the card game included in Kakarot, that game and its cards are based on old card asses. The rarest cards were known as Prism cards. Sets are still being published every now and then, with old cards, and I know that the French Dragon Ball community has a lot of love for them, though clearly in Japan, Dragon Ball Heroes is fulfilling that role. Hey kids, don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video thus far. If you like this sort of content and want to see more and support the channel, then consider becoming a Patreon. There, you can help support the channel through various tiers while getting some perks of your own. As a Patreon, you will help get the videos out faster, fun thumbnail art, editing, and even writing for videos. Overall, this is the best way we can ensure to keep providing you guys with awesome content. Plus, you get some neat perks like a bonus mini podcast, early access to videos such as this one, and more. So be sure to go to patreon.com slash smugstick and consider supporting the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. And now back to our show. A Grand Problem this is the first episode I was talking about for Funimation's Dragon Ball GT. When GT was released in the States in 2003, Funimation chose to skip over the first 16 episodes of the series, the Black Star Dragon Ball arc, and instead get straight into the baby arc with General Rildo. These episodes would later be released in 2004 as The Lost Episodes. In lieu of those episodes, Funimation created a recap episode named A Grand Problem that explains everything that happened in them. So, in America, that's that's what Kit saw. Sleeping gas! Goku! Hold your breath! And to think all this is because of one selfish wish. So. Cancelled sets. Funimation is notorious for its bad Dragon Ball home releases. There have been times where good releases were killed off. In 2006, the Ultimate Uncut Edition, which included the redubbing of the first two seasons of Dragon Ball Z after Funimation moved away from the Ocean cast, were cancelled after just 9 sets. This one hurts me in particular because it included the Spanish dub and I'm never gonna get that anywhere else. Much later on, in 2011, the first Blu-ray release of Dragon Ball Z began. It had a pretty good remaster and it was in its correct aspect ratio, but they were expensive for the amount of episodes included, and were competing against their own Dragon Ball Z Kai sets, so they were just cancelled. Aspect Ratio Survey In 2013, following the cancellation of the level sets, Funimation put out a survey, asking fans what they preferred, 16x9 or 4x3 aspect ratio. We thought this was really gonna be the way for us to show them that we wanted a 4x3 aspect ratio. However, things didn't go as planned. The next Blu-ray set we got was 16x9, leading people to believe that perhaps casual fans really did choose and liked 16x9 aspect ratios, but that actually wasn't the case. As revealed by Lance Heiskel, I hope I'm pronouncing 
pronouncing that right, a former Funimation employee, the survey winner was 4x3, but it was ignored by Funimation because sales showed that 16x9 sold better. Clearly, they didn't realize that they sold better because they were extremely cheap and readily available compared to the 4x3 releases. Hopefully, they've learned their lesson. Best of DVDs. Released starting in 2016, these Funimation DVDs were a fairly cheap way to watch some Dragon Ball. They compiled 7 episodes each, themed around a specific character. There was Best of Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, the villains, and a general Best of Fights. They were strange. Dragon Ball GT Be A Star in 2003, a contest was held by Funimation where fans could submit a video to celebrate the arrival of Dragon Ball GT. The winners would win a copy of the first DVD, and according to the winner, they were supposed to also get $10,000, but they didn't. They were, however, showcased as a special feature in the sixth DVD of Dragon Ball GT in the US, the single release. I've also seen people talk about a contest where the winner could be chosen to be a minor character in GT, but I can't find much more about it, nor can I find if this was the same contest. Red Pants Army The Red Pants Army are a new version of the Red Ribbon Army that served as antagonist in Dragon Ball Online and Dragon Ball Heroes. It was formed by General Bon under the command of Android 9 and the clone of Dr. Dro, working in alliance with the remainders of the Frieza Force. The army commands androids that use Android 8, 16, and 20 as a basis, and even Tao Pai Pai X. The army was later defeated by the Time Patrollers, and in Dragon Ball Heroes, General Bon has an alliance with the Dark Empire. Silas, the first Time Patroller, another video game character, this time from Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission. He was a galactic patroller that was recruited by Kuronoa to become the very first Time Patroller. He was designed by Toriyotaro as the main antagonist of the game. He created Oms, an evil AI which absorbs Silas and transforms him. Silas tried to mess with time and space, forcing future trunks to travel to the future and team up with Beat as the great Saiyaman 3 and 4. Anime Manga the Dragon Ball anime manga books are a series of volumes released starting in 1993 that compiled screenshots of the anime into a manga form and went on to cover all the movies all the way to Path to Power and later returned to cover Dragon Ball Z starting in 2005. They are an oddity to say the least, but the Z ones have at least very cool covers, drawn by Katsuyoshi Nakatsuru. The series continued into Dragon Ball GT in Psycho Jump as a tie-in with the at the time new Evil Dragon Saga in Dragon Ball Heroes. It skipped all the way to the final final arc, but eventually went back to cover the rest of GT. I actually own these, because it's kinda funny to say I own the GT manga. The movies, the Saiyan Saga and Frieza Saga were compiled into Shueisha Jump Remix volumes later on, and have since then covered all of the new gen films. Novels Though we have sadly never gotten any official Dragon Ball novels, we have gotten two film adaptations, one for Broly and one for Superhero. Sadly, these are the only two novels for the franchise. Prince of Destruction Vegeta this is the name given to Majin Vegeta in Japan. In fact, King of Destruction is the title given to any character taken over by Bobbity, such as Bojack or Garlic Jr. in Dragon Ball Heroes. The first time this title was put into the English zeitgeist was in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, when Majin Vegeta was renamed to Prince of Destruction Vegeta in an update. This name is also used in the card game. Goku Black Voice Change Goku Black has two very distinct voices in Xenoverse 2. This is because Goku Black was added to Xenoverse before the super anime was ever dubbed, so we had no idea who he could be. They gave him a raspy voice in Xenoverse 2. Then when they dubbed the Goku Black arc, they decided to make him more refined and gave him a British accent. Rose in the game reflects that. I might as well put this here. When Rose first came out, his name was Goku Black, Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black, and was later simplified. Dragon Ball Board Games I'm gonna keep this one short since there's not much documented information on this. There have been many incarnations of Dragon Ball board games. The ones people know most of are probably the Monopoly boards, which there are two of. One for the Tournament of Power, where the pieces are each universe, and one for the Cell games, where the pieces are the different Dragon Ball objects. There's Dragon Ball Yahtzee, Dragon Ball Clue, with the pieces being Dragon Ball Z villains, and my personal favorite, Dragon Ball Chess, with many variations. Rock the Dragon Set 
In 2013, Funimation released a DVD set targeted at those who grew up with the Ocean dub. This extremely rare set came with a book full of trivia and history on the series. It contained 53 episodes Kid grew up with, including all the additions and the changes in music. It even included the Ocean dub of Dead Zone, World's Strongest, and Tree of Might. Just like in the original run, the set concludes with Goku arriving on Namek and defeating Riku. This isn't the first time the Ocean dub was released on DVD, but it has been the last. Middle of the Iceberg Dragon Ball Super Bonus Chapters Dragon Ball Super has had bonus chapters released for the Jump Victory Carnival's guidebooks since 2015, though in 2019 and 2020, they were instead released as bonuses for volumes 10 and 12. The following are the bonus chapters. The first one takes place in Snake Way, with Murray visiting King Kai, bringing the Namekian Dragon Balls over to return his planet. Kaio wants a racetrack, but before he can continue to think things over, Goku appears and wishes for the planet to be the exact same as before. And then, both Murray and Goku leave. The second bonus chapter takes place in the future timeline, as Gohan speeds off to find who is using the Dragon Balls, as they will need them. The androids are destroying cities. It turns out it's the Pilaf gang wishing for youth and getting turned into babies. Shenron is about to disappear when the Dragon Balls just drop to the floor, signifying Piccolo's death at the hands of the androids. As Gohan screams out Piccolo's name, Mai and little baby Trunks look at each other. For the third bonus chapter, Gohan bumps into future Trunks at Capsule Corp, following the events of the Goku Black arc. Gohan had been trained in the gravity room as of late, and asks Trunks how the future is, unaware that it's gone. Trunks turns to Mai and tells her that they're just gonna go back to the future before Zamazu appeared. For the fourth, Goten, Trunks, and Marin are put in charge of Monster Island by Android 17 while he participates in the Tournament of Power. Marin spots seven Cell Juniors who attack the kids until they see that they too are wearing the Ranger armbands. Android 17 explains to Krillin that the kids are gonna be okay since he tamed the fake Cell Juniors, but the narrator tells us that since Cell could regenerate from a single cell, maybe they aren't fake after all. In the fifth one, at the Galactic Patrol HQ, Goku tells Miras the events of the Broly movie, with Miras being surprised that anyone could live on Vampa. The sixth tells the story of Cranberry, a warrior from the Frieza Force, who is assigned to come to Namek as part of Zarbon's crew. He's killed by Zarbon as he's kicked into a lake, but is later revived by a wish to bring everyone that was killed by Frieza and his men. Ultimately, he is captured by Jacko and would later help Moro escape. The seventh and final bonus chapter so far gives us a glimpse into Frieza's time during the Moro arc, as Kikono warns Frieza that criminals have escaped from the galactic prison. But Frieza doesn't really care for criminals. Kikono is confused. Isn't the Frieza Force criminals? Frieza goes on to correct them. All they are is businessmen, selling planets to those in need of one. There is also one little bonus manga that came out in the early stages of the manga, where Goku and Vegeta are surprised by Shampa, who turns out to really just be Beerus being inflated by Whis to look like his brother. Gohan and Krillin are there too, and they ask if this is what Dragon Ball Super is gonna be like. Spine Art The following information can be found in the Kan Zenshu Spine Art Guide. So, this one's pretty cool, I've always really liked this. When you collect all the Dragon Ball volumes, a little piece of art is made, drawn by Akira Toriyama himself. He drew these as the Tonka Bomb volumes were being published. So there's some little quirks here and there. For example, King Kai has a poop stick, referencing Dr. Slump. There's also the case of Yajirobe, who is in there twice. He's the only character to be there twice besides Goku, as a kid and Super Saiyan. Toriyama admitted that this was completely by mistake. You may also notice that there is a no Buu Saga characters. This is most likely because of how sudden this series ended. This is further evidenced by the Dai Zenshu, which shows the complete art, and tells us that one little bit, Goku's feet, was an extra. Since the last two Tonka Bone volumes are thicker than the other ones, Goku's feet and legs were combined into a single volume, which Toriyama didn't intend. A brand new piece of spine art came along with a 2009 version of the Tonka Bone release. This one has a lot more characters from the Buu Saga and, like, none from the Cell Saga, which I guess is a trade-off. The third spine art was made for the Kan Zenban release of the manga. This one is much more complex, as it's a race between Goku, Krillin, Roshi, Yamcha, Kami, and Vegeta. Goku and Krillin are on foot, and the rest are in race course. There's a bunch of characters in the stands, and you can see that the race is advertising different companies involved in Dragon Ball, such as Bird Studio, Weekly Shonen Jump, Studio K2R, and Studio Cello, both of which help with the revision for the Kun Zenban release. Studio Cello actually just means Bird Studio in Italian, so it's still Toriyama's company. This spine art was actually reprinted in the Dragon Ball Visual History book, showing that Tien and Chaozu are cut off right at the end. Interestingly, even though the Kun Zenban release is from 2004, Tien can be seen sporting his Battle of Gods outfit which wouldn't show up until 2013. There's also been a bunch of magazines such as Psycho Jump that has had Dragon Ball characters in the spine arts. I don't feel this is as important since this isn't the main Dragon Ball release, but here's an example of one. This is the 2015 Psycho Jump spine art. 
Finally, Dragon Ball Super Spine Art is a callback to the original Tangobon one, with characters flying off behind Goku, and behind them, the Super Dragon Balls. There is one little thing I want to talk about when it comes to the Spine Art though, and that's Dragon Ball Super Volume 5 Alternate Cover. To celebrate the future Trunks arc, the Japanese version of Volume 5 of the Dragon Ball Super manga features an alternate cover, with him as the prominent character. If you use this cover, you can see that in the Spine Art, Trunks replaces one of the Zenos. Bulma's real hair color. In the May 2013 issue of V-Jump, Akira Toriyama had an interview where he was asked about the hair changes in Battle of Gods. There, Toriyama said that he didn't really care too much about that stuff, especially since women change their hair so much. He said, with people like Bulma, I actually don't even know myself what their natural hair color is. To be fair, Toriyama has always been very inconsistent with color. Nimbus is sometimes yellow, other times pink, Bulma's hair is blue one day, other times purple, Corrin is brown sometimes. In fact, he colored Android 18's hair pink for Battle of Gods until someone pointed out to him that she was actually already blonde. Dr. Slump Crossovers Dragon Ball and Dr. Slump have had many crossovers. The most obvious ones are obviously the ones in the Dragon Ball anime and manga. There are so many in the Dragon Ball manga. My personal favorite one is when Mai picks up a poop stick, making a poop joke very similar to one in Dr. Slump, to which p Love reprimands her, saying that this manga has a little bit more class than that one. There's many others in the background, such as King Nico chans spaceships, and posters of Dr. Slump through the series. The cast of Dr. Slump are featured prominently from chapter 70 to 73 of Dragon Ball. This crossover is adapted and expanded upon in Dragon Ball episodes 55 through 57. Dragon Ball Super also has a Dr. Slump crossover in episode 69. In the brief return of Dr. Slump, which ran for four volumes, GT, Goku, Pan, Trunks, Giro, and their spaceship show up. Goku teleports very briefly to Penguin Village in episode 43 of Dragon Ball Super, while in the Dr. Slump remake in the final volume. In fact, they show up multiple times and are referenced all over the volume. Episodes 56 through 59, Goku appears in a spin of what happened during the Red Ribbon Saga. He even turns into an Ozaru, and Areli defeats him. Senbei fixes the Dragon Radar, Goku goes to school, they even fight Murasaki. The seventh Dr. Slump film features a very brief fight between Goku and Bojack, as well as cameos from Oolong, Mai, Shu, Pilaf, Lunch, Toribot, and more. But those are just the ones I thought were the most important. Yamada Katsutenai, Wink TV. In 1990, Goku made a guest appearance in this kid's TV show, hosted by the pop star Kuniko Yamada. Goku brings along the seven Dragon Balls and summons Shenron, who grants the host the ability to do the Kamehameha, which she launches at Goku before he calls down the Nimbus and flies off. Goku and Maruko-chan Aired on January 2nd, 1994, this special presentation has Goku and Chibi Maruko-chan talk about their movies. Goku talks about Cooler's Revenge. It's really cute. Chibi Maruko-chan actually has quite a history with Dragon Ball. Created by Momoko Sakura, it was a comedic series based on her own childhood. The anime series is one of the longest running anime of all time, and it's still going on. She sadly passed away in 2018. Her and Akira Toriyama had a lot of respect for each other, with some of their letters being published in Momoko Sakura's Technicolor World. She loved Dragon Ball, with both artists creating pieces to commemorate each other's works. Goku and Doraemon in Takeshi's Castle Takeshi's Castle was a show starring Takeshi Kitano, a comedian who sets up this castle into challenges for participants. Goku and Roshi appeared in one episode, according to forum posts online. I can't find footage of it, but I could find footage of Goku and Doraemon from a Spanish dub of the show. IQ Sapuri. On Saturday nights, viewers of Fuji TV in Japan were greeted by IQ Sapuri, a game show that tested their minds. One of the puzzles was a Dragon Ball animation where viewers had to point out the differences between the two sides. Can you spot them all? Q Tai Panic Adventure. I briefly covered this in the first part of the iceberg, but I wanted to go further into detail. Translating into Orb Panic Adventure, this was a short crossover between Dragon Ball, One Piece, and Astro Boy in 2003, presented in the Fuji TV HQ, which is shaped like an orb, thus the name. Spectators were surrounded by screens as the adventure played out around them. The Dragon Ball cast features characters from the Frieza Saga as the Emperor attacks Tokyo, while the Arlong Pirates attack off the coast. Astro Boy arrives just in time to save the falling Fuji TV orb, saving the day, as the Z Fighters, the Straw Hat, and the Astro Boy crew celebrate. A sequel was created the following year, named q Panic Adventure Returns. This time, it featured Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, and Kochikame. An elf from One Piece begins attacking Tokyo, while Ryotsu from Kochikame tries to stop him. Goku and the Straw Hat Pirates arrive to help out. Luffy and Ryotsu even fall down, having to be saved by Goku and his flying Nimbus, although only Luffy can ride it. Goku and Luffy team up to defeat an elf, as the Dragon Team, this time the Buu Saga cast, appear with the Dragon Balls to wish for the city to be restored to how it was before. 
4. History of Japan This was a TV special aired from the 9th to the 10th of September in 2017. It was an educational special, obviously covering the history of Japan. A short portion of it features an animated section with various Dragon Ball Super characters depicting Japanese historical figures. Dragon Ball Z Summer Vacation Special Taking place before the Cell Games and in the same city as Super Android 13, Goku and Gohan discuss the Dragon Ball movies released at the time and tell the audience to check out the new one, Super Android 13. It aired on August 2nd, 1992. Looking back at it all, the Dragon Ball Z Year End Show. A short special aired on New Year's Eve 1993. During the Buu Saga, Gohan and Goten have a bath when suddenly Goku shows up from Otherworld. The three of them then reflect back on the Cell Games and the Otherworld Tournament. This is the ultimate battle in all the universes, Son Goku vs Jiren. On October 8th, 2017, a special for the Dragon Ball Super anime aired, which combined episodes 109 and 110. The episodes where Goku obtains Ultra Instinct Omen for the first time. It was advertised alongside One Piece, as its anime had a special a week before. Kiyoshi Hikawa, the singer for Limit Break X Survivor. He appeared as a guest during the initial airing of Dragon Ball Super episode 115, commenting on the fight between Kefla and Goku. Dragon Ball SSSS a project by Bandai, Toei, V-Jump, and Psyche Jump. It was made to create new Dragon Ball titles at the time, starting with free streaming for Plan to Eradicate the Super Saiyans, the remake of Plan to Eradicate the Saiyans, and episode of Bardock. A DVD with both specials was released with the March 2012 Psyche Jump magazine. It had its own website with a timeline of Dragon Ball's events. Strangely, since this was before Dragon Ball Super, Battle of Gods and Fukatsu no F are combined into a single arc called the Gods of the Universe arc in this timeline. The project was made to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Dragon Ball, and and SSSS stands for Psycho Super Saiyan Secret, beginning in 2011. The Origins of the Kaioshin and the Makaioshin I talked a little bit about this earlier, but I want to go further into detail. In an interview for the full color manga, Toriyama revealed, The Kaio, or the core people, sprout as fruit of the gigantic world tree, aka the Kaiju tree, from the world core planet. Their world's population is rather small, only around 80, but they can live up to 75,000 years. They're genderless, and they live relaxing lives, studying various things at their school-like castle. When one of the selected Kaio dies, the next one is picked from a lottery from within the planet's population. Population, but Kaioshin can only be picked if they were born from a golden fruit. Sometimes Kaioshin with a dark heart are born, becoming my Kaioshin, kings of the demon realm. J World J World was an indoor theme park revolving around Dragon Ball, One Piece, and Naruto. It opened in 2013 and closed in 2019. It also had sections for other jump heroes, besides the main three series mentioned. The Dragon Ball section had several photo ops, such as the World Tournament Arena, Saiyan Armor Scouter, Saiyan Pod, and the Flying Nimbus, as well as attractions where visitors could help Goku find the Dragon Balls, one where they help him fight Frieza with the Kamehameha, and even Dragon Ball themed bumper cars, as well as many other seasonal games. There were custom characters, such as Mr. Satan, Frieza, Goku and Vegeta. It had Dragon Ball food and even themed Dragon Ball events, such as in 2014, where in order to celebrate the release of Dragon Ball Kai the final chapters, J World had a Dragon Ball festival with many Majin Buu themed games and characters, even including a live performance revolving around Buu, Mr. Satan, and Bobbity. Xeno Heroes the Xeno Dragon Ball Heroes are characters from the Dragon Ball Heroes games who assist Time Patrol Trunks and the Supreme Kai of Time. Xeno Trunks was originally recruited by Kronoa, the Supreme Kai of Time, after she discovered that he had time traveled and messed with time. He was tasked with fixing time rifts and saving the Dragon Ball timelines from Toa Mira and other evildoers. Kronoa decided that Trunks needed some help, thus using his memories to summon a version of Goku who had gone through the events of Dragon Ball GT. Over the course of their adventures, they summon and gather other allies, such as Xeno Vegeta, Xeno Gohan, and Xeno Goten. One of the most interesting Xeno characters is Xeno Pan, who is the Pan from Dragon Ball GT, who was recruited into the Time Patrol after her universe was destroyed. There's also Xeno Bardock, who was manipulated by the Time Breakers, and even Xeno King Vegeta. Dark Gogeta Dark Gogeta is an enemy in Dragon Ball Heroes. Finn, a Majin-like android created by Toa, attacks Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and absorbs him, making himself into a distorted version of the fusion. Even after Gogeta frees himself, Finn still has Gogeta's essence within him, which he uses against the Dragon Ball heroes. Marin Nose as you all know, Krillin doesn't have a nose. This is a trait passed down to his daughter. However, in the final chapters of Dragon Ball, as well as the current Dragon Ball Super manga, she has a nose. This has actually been explained in the Dai Zenshu 7, as her having grown a nose during puberty. 17's fate in GT In Dragon Ball GT, Android 17 was turned into a villain through the manipulations of Dr. Jiro and Dr. Mew, and ultimately killed by 18 and Goku. You think that that's the end of the story, but in the GT Perfect Files, it's actually revealed that 17 was revived through the final wish Goku makes to Shenron. 
Super Full Power Saiyan 4 and Limit Breaker. No, I didn't misspell that, this is actually just what it's called. This is the state Goku obtains when the other Saiyans share their energy with him during the Baby Saga. Limit Breaker is achieved similarly, with the Saiyans breaking through the limits even more. Though Goku and Vegeta get it through other Saiyans giving them power, Broly seems to get it by himself. Crazy Forms in Heroes this was much more of a talking point back in the early days of Heroes, but fans would often joke that Heroes was just a machine to give everyone Super Saiyan 3 and Super Saiyan 4. For example, Future Trunks, GT Trunks, Future Gohan, Vegeta, Vegito, Gogeta, and Adult Gohan have all gotten Super Saiyan 3, and Adult Gohan has gotten Super Saiyan 4 alongside Bardock, Vegito, and Broly. Gogeta was even given Golden Ozaru, even Pycon gets a Super Form, and nearly every villain gets a Majin Form. King Piccolo gets a Giant State, as well as a Fusion with Kami, and some Shadow Dragon get new forms too, etc, etc, etc. Dark Dragon Balls During the Dark Empire arc in Dragon Ball Heroes, Dende is mind-controlled into creating the dark set of Dragon Balls that spread through time and space and attach themselves to the chest of villains, powering them up. They gather to summon Dark Shenron and are used by Miki Kabora to regain power and other nefarious acts. The Xeno Shadow Dragons were born from these dark Dragon Balls. 28 Inhabited Planets Dragon Ball Super introduced many concepts loved by fans, but sometimes it seems just as many are hated. For example, the retcon of the Potara fusion only being permanent for the Kaioshin during the Goku Black arc. I'm not a fan of it myself, but the example for this entry revolves around Shin explaining that there are only 28 inhabited planets in Universe. 7. This is a ridiculously low number knowing that Frieza owns at least 79, as we see the 79th planet in the manga and anime. This means Frieza largely owns empty planets, which he sells. Shin had previously explained that Buu destroyed hundreds of planets. This is often used to point out that Shin isn't very good at his job. With that being said, it's totally possible that Frieza is just selling empty planets to those who need it. It does make sense. But it seems the more we continue with the story, the more planets are introduced, and the more we're gonna see. I don't think the 20 28 planets is gonna remain for very long. Insert songs. Insert songs are vocal or instrumental songs played during episodes that stand out a lot more than regular background music. Dragon Ball has had quite a few of them, though many are removed outside of Japan. The following is a list of every single insert song in the franchise. Mazaze Tenkaichi. The theme for the World Tournament plays during episodes 19, 28, 86, and 95. Mysterious Wonderland plays on episode 29, while Goku and Nam fly over the river. This episode is nearly entirely filler, so I wonder why they chose to have a song here. The Dragon Ball Legend plays on episode 30, 33, 35, and 76. It's also the ending for the third movie, one of my personal favorites. Song Goku's Song plays on episode 43. This one is actually performed by Masako Nozawa, Goku's voice actress, as Goku flies to West City. Red Ribbon Army plays on episode 48 as General Blue's forces spread out. With a burning heart, Defeat the Red Ribbon Army plays in episode 65 when Goku goes off to defeat the army. The Blue Travelers plays on episode 78 when Goku goes back to the lands of Korin to revive Bora. Wolf Hurricane, Yamcha's theme, performed by his voice actor Toro Furuya, plays in episode 87 as he fights Ten Shinhan. I used to play this one all the time in the car with my parents, really driving them crazy. The Teachings of Muten Roshi plays on episode 130 and was performed by Kohei Miyauchi, Master Roshi's voice actor. It plays from a car radio as Tien, Yamcha, and shouts to train. That's all the songs for the original series. Now let's move on to Z. The first insert song is Battle Colored Warriors, which plays in episode 20 as King Kai explains the history of the Saiyans. Fly High plays on episode 46 from a radio as Roshi gets ready to go to the hospital and see Goku. It is incredible that it was never used again because it's really good. Battle Point Unlimited plays on episode 120 20, and serves as Future Trunks' theme as he defeats Frieza. This one is actually not a vocal song and was composed by Kenji Yamamoto. Mind Power Key plays on episode 139 in Future Trunks' flashback. As you can tell, with these two and the song I mentioned earlier, they like giving Trunks themes. Day of Fate, Soul vs. Soul plays on episode 184. It is Gohan's Super Saiyan 2 transformation theme and maybe the most well-known insert song here in the States outside of Ultimate Battle. If I Don't Who Will plays on episode 289, while Trunks visits it's Gohan's home. It is an instrumental version of the ending theme for movie 13. In the first Dragon Ball Z TV special, Solid State Scouter plays as a theme for Bardock while he goes off to battle Frieza's men and while he fights Dodoria's forces. In Dragon Ball GT, the only insert song used is Dan Dan, the opening for Dragon Ball GT. In episode 64, as Goku remembers his life. 
in the final episode. Dragon Ball Kai had a lot of insert songs to make up for the fact that Z had a few. The first is Over the Star, which plays on episode 17 as the battles against the Saiyans finally come to a close. Take the stage. Ginyu's special squad plays on episode 29 and 28 as the Ginyu forces theme. Only a chilling elegy plays on episode 37 and 40, Frieza's theme. Saiyan Blood plays on episode 41, performed by Ryo Horikawa, Vegeta's voice, while he powers up to fight Frieza. Super Dragon Soul plays on episode 41, when Goku comes out of the healing pot and gets ready to face off against Frieza. The Lone Warrior plays on episode 82, while Trunks powers up to battle Cell and is sung by Takeshi Kusao, Trunks' voice actor. My 18th Magic, which is technically Android 18's theme, plays on episode 85, from Goku's Caught. News of the Cell games plays on episode 85 as well, while Cell defeats the army. It describes Cell's plan for the Cell games, if the title wasn't obvious enough. Dragon Soul, Dragon Ball Kai's opening, plays in episode 97 as the montage of the Afterlife Tournament and Kai's story plays. When the final chapters was released outside of Japan, Toei decided to add two new insert songs to the anime. The first was Let It Burn in episode 158, while Kid Buu and Super Saiyan 2 Goku fight. The second one is Flo's English version of Chala Hechala in episode 167 as the series ends. Dragon Ball Super episode 39 used Chozetsu Dynamic, Super's first opening as an insert song when Goku uses Kaioken against Hit. Ultimate Battle was used in episodes 110, 115, 116, 121, 123, 129, 130, and 131, making it the most used insert song in Dragon Ball history and serves as Ultra Instinct Goku's theme. Finally, Limit Break X Survivor, Super's second opening, is used as an insert song as everyone celebrates the end of the Tournament of Power. The movies also had a few insert songs. Tenkaichi Gohan, performed by Mazago Konozawa plays in Dead Zone when Gohan gets drunk off an apple. I Love Mr. Piccolo plays in World's Strongest, Inside Gohan's Dream, also performed by Nozawa. The Feeling of Whistling plays in Movie 4, Lord's Luck, obviously being Gohan's whistle theme. Battle of Gods used Hero Song of Hope by Flo when Goku and Beerus fly outside the cave. F by Maximum the Hormone is used in Resurrection F when Frieza is revived, and also served as a huge inspiration for the movie as the song was released years before the film. I guess it's worth mentioning that an instrumental version of Blizzard is also used in Broly. I will have an entry about the anime openings and endings as well, though it may be out of place in the iceberg, because I feel like that one should have been higher up and I don't know if I can fit it in this video, so it might be for the third one. Hit Song Collection These were CD sets containing openings, endings, insert songs, movie themes, and image songs. Most of these image songs had loose connections to the series, and were more so simply inspired by it, and never actually appeared in any of the movies or show. Some were even performed by voice actors from the show. There was even some sketches before songs, such as a drunk Chi Chi singing karaoke with Gohan, or King Kai telling bad jokes. There's like dozens and dozens of these songs, so sadly I can't name them all. Some are pretty good, others are eh, but you can find almost all of them on YouTube. Dragon Ball Multiverse Multiverse is a fun manga by the French pair Salagir and Gogeta Jr., revolving around a multiversal tournament. Some universes have alternate versions of the characters we know, such as a universe where Goku and Vegeta never defuse from Vegito. It is one of the most popular fan manga out there and has been going since 2008. 1997, Saban, Tree of Might. Tree of Might is a strange piece of Dragon Ball media. There's a whole five English dubs of the film, Speedy, Saban, Pioneer, Funimation, and AB Group. The Saban dub is the most interesting one for me. It aired between episodes 45 and 46, right around the Vegeta freakout scene, as Krillin and Gohan get their potential awakened and steal Vegeta's Dragon Ball. But it didn't air as a movie, it aired as a three-part special. This was never released in home media. Instead, Pioneer had their own version released that way. Tree of Might, opening salvo in the DBZ triple feature, next only to Nami. Toyotaro Plagiarism Toyotaro has been accused of plagiarism a few times. Most of the time it's Akira Toriyama and it seems like most people don't mind that as much. However, the biggest problem was when Toyotaro posted a draft version of a V-Jump cover. People noticed that he had used the Captain America panel as a base for Goku. This caused a pretty big storm on Twitter. Nothing as big has happened since then. Xenomorph Frieza slash Predator Cooler Fans have often talked about how third form Frieza has many similarities with the Xenomorph from the Alien franchise, with a long head and all. Similarly, fans 
speculate that Cooler's final form could have been inspired by the Predator as a counterpart, Ginyu's original body. As you all know, Captain Ginyu has a strange ability to switch bodies with adversaries. But what does that mean for his original body? Well, when we see him dead in GT, Ginyu retains the alien body we saw him in, rather than the frog. So does that mean that is Ginyu's original body? Well, not exactly. In May 1991, Shonen Jump published an article about the upcoming Cooler movie. In it, it is revealed that Salsa and Ginyu competed to be the leader of the Cooler squad, and that Salsa is one of the few to know his original body. The guide for the video game, Gekishin Frieza, tells us about the Ginyu Force's childhoods, even showing that Ginyu once switched bodies with the richest kid in school, showing Ginyu's usual body as the one he had at the time. Finally, as one of Toyotaro's monthly drawings, he drew a scene where Ginyu obtained the body we know now. As you can see, his previous body was a different one, so we don't know for sure. I like to think that Toyotaro's version is the right one though. Italian GT Dub the Italian dub of Dragon Ball GT is somewhat of an oddity. While I enjoy the voice acting, there are a few fun quirks of the show. For example, Gohan says that if Goku is an Earthling, then he's Spider-Man. <laughs> The theme of the show was completely changed from Dan Dan to an electronic type thing, but it's pretty fun. If you ever played Budokai AF, then you remember it from the World Tournament. The final scene of GT, where Goku walks off as he remembers his past adventures, was completely removed from the Italian version of the show, most likely because of the use of Dan Dan. It wasn't until 2021 when the scene was restored with some narration. Of course, there are many other dubs with changes. I just wanted to highlight this one because of the theme and the ending scene. Sorry, international fans, I'm not gonna talk too much about other dubs. With that being said, the Argentinian dub of Dragon Ball Super. Broly. The Latin American dub of Dragon Ball is loved by millions of people, including those in Argentina. But did you know there is two versions of the Dragon Ball Super Broly dub in Latin America? One is the most widely available, starring Mario Castañeda as Goku. However, Funimation, out of all companies, was involved in creating a different Latino dub from Argentina, which didn't even air in that country. Funimation wanted to distribute the Spanish dub in Region 1, meaning the US, Puerto Rico, and Canada. This gets into copyright stuff, with Funimation not having the rights to the classic dub, the Funimation Argentinian dub aired in the TV channel Stars. Funny enough, the actors were chosen to resemble those in the original Latino dub. Oye, Vegeta, ¿conoces la técnica de la fusión? Oye, Vegeta. It's very strange, and maybe it doesn't interest most of you, but I went way too deep into this rabbit hole not to mention it. TFS in Xenoverse and Resurrection F. I mentioned it before, but Team 4 Star was in Dragon Ball Z Kai. But that wasn't the first time cast members were in an official product. Kaiser Neko, Lane Pator, and Takahana 101 are voices in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Row! Sham! Paper! Justice is super good! Fun time bingo! <laughs> And Kaiser Neko plays a Frieza soldier in Resurrection F. Beats clothing. This is a fan theory that seems to have quite a bit of ground. Beats, the Saiyan who accompanied Paragus in search of Broly and was later killed by him, wears clothes very similar to those adult Broly wears. This led fans to believe that Paragus probably took his clothes and gave them to his son, also stealing his pouch. Film quality episodes. There are a handful of Dragon Ball episodes which were in much higher quality than the usual TV episodes. Normal episodes of Dragon Ball shot the animation cells in 16mm film, but there are a few that were shot in 35mm. Kai is the best way to see these properly. Episodes 73 through 80 used 35mm film, and then returned back to 16mm. Sadly, they're not really shown off well in most home releases, because, like we've said, they're not usually the greatest home releases. 3 or 2 Wishes there are inconsistencies on how many wishes Shenron grants post-Dende. In the Cell arc, it's explained that reviving a large number of people will give you only two wishes instead of three. At first, it seems that Dende giving Shenron the power to revive groups lowers the overall number. But in the Buu saga, Shenron will grant three wishes unless one of them is to revive a group of people. Later on, in the Resurrection F movie, Shenron only grants two wishes, while in the anime version he grants three. In Broly, he only grants one. Dragon Ball doing so 
silly Dragon Ball things as usual, sure, but I think the correct answer is that he grants three wishes unless one is way too strong for him. Then it shoots down to two. Early designs. Official sources have released a very little amount of early designs and drafts for characters, but the ones that we do have are really interesting. For example, you can see in these early Boo designs that Bobbity was born from one of them. Same with Dodoria from this Frieza design. Cell has some of the most interesting interpretations. Some of them even have hair. Gohan is one that always causes a stir since people really like some of the other designs. But there is so many more, such as King Kai, Baby, Super Saiyan 3 and more. Personally, the ones I find more interesting are the ones from when the series was just starting. Here you can see the evolution of Goku and his allies. I have a whole video about the early production of Dragon Ball if you'd like to learn more. Christian Ad. This one is only about a month old at the time of writing this, but a Reddit user named Office Honcho found an old church ad that used Dragon Ball Z footage to spread the word about their service and events. It's quite strange and none of the women are voiced by women, and there's even a strange dream sequence. The user explained that it was from 2004, which makes it kind of impressive since they do have the Falconer score as backing music. So somebody out there bought the VHS tape and the CD and then decided to make this. Oh man, 50 channels and nothing? What is this world coming to? How can you be watching TV? I can't stop thinking about how awesome the car repair ministry is. It's alive and kicking. I mean, if you need car repairs, you just write car repairs on your blue card and they'll see if they can help you out with your car repairs. Yes, it's awesome. It's really cool. What do you think, Bobby? Autism Awareness Brazil the Par State Brazilian government released an autism PSA with Don Don as background music and featured a Dragon Ball fan singing it. Fenyo. Fenyo is the official artist with the most online presence when it comes to Dragon Ball. He is most well known for making art for Dokkan Battle, but he draws personal Dragon Ball drawings which he posts on Twitter and Instagram as well. They range from funny to stories and even some more risque stuff. He's amazing and has become somewhat of a pillar in the community. Leaked Funimation Audio on February 11, 2019, in response to the ongoing allegations of sexual misconduct posed against Broly's voice actor, Vic Magnana, various channels began uploading leaked Funimation audio to YouTube, where voice actors would act out inflammatory and even sexual scenes as their Dragon Ball characters, stuff such as Popo and Kami discussing a sacred ointment and even Goku calling Gohan the f -slur. They're easy to find on YouTube. The Big Getty Star allowed me to cheat death. How could this be? This entry refers to how when you defeat Metal Cooler in Xenoverse 2, he has a 50% chance of saying the big... It's here because a player fights Cooler a lot, especially in one quest where you face over 20 at once, making it so this quote gets ingrained into the player's mind. I don't have too many Xenoverse entries in this iceberg because I kind of have a whole other Xenoverse iceberg which I hope to release later on, but I have some sprinkled here and there. Welcome to Dragon Ball World. In collaboration with the drink brand Kirin, Dragon Ball released a website named Welcome to the Dragon Ball World back in May 2017, where users could create their own Dragon Ball avatars. Sadly, it has since then been taken down. Rajawali Graffiti. This was an Indonesian manga publisher that published Dragon Ball and illegally continued the series after the final volume with their own story arcs. I can't find much information about this online, but if you're from Indonesia and know more about this, I would love to learn more. Visisms. Visisms is a term coined by fans to refer to quirks in the Dragon Ball English translation of the manga. Perhaps the most famous example of this is calling Vegito Vegerot in order to keep in line with Goku Saiyan name being Kakarot in English rather than Kakaroto. There are many changes in this release, with most being just random stuff that kinda changes the meaning of things, such as Goku's introduction having him say, hey bro, what's up? But there are way too many to list off here. First public image of Dragon Ball and Birdland Press. Beginning publication on July 1st, 1982, Birdland Press was a Toriyama fan club newsletter for the Akira Toriyama Preservation Society. We got a lot of behind the scenes stuff here, such as Jackie Chan meeting Akira Toriyama. In fact, this was where we got our very first look at Dragon Ball. As you can see here, it's very appropriate that the first image we ever got 
Night was of Goku and Bulma. Manga Theater Akira Toriyama's Manga Theater is a set of volumes containing Toriyama's lesser-known manga and one-shots, such as Gogo Ackman, Chobit, and more. This is one of the only few places where you can read The Adventures of Tongpoon and Dragon Boy, Dragon Ball's prototypes. It's also been released in English. Goku's Accent Something that is very difficult to translate when dubbing or subbing a series is a character's accent. Accents add a little bit something to the character, giving them bits of layers and help the world feel more lived in, giving it somewhat of a sense of geography even. This is the case with Goku himself. In the original Japanese, Goku is depicted as being from the country and talking in a much more common and unsophisticated manner than other characters. We see this somewhat as Goku can be heard saying yo, for example. According to Saiya Jedi on Kanzenshu, Goku talks in something akin to a Tohoku accent. Other characters such as Chi Chi and her father have accents and speak in similar ways too. I asked my good friend Vaughn to explain this further. Goku has a rural speech pattern with more relaxed than loser approach to sentence structure. My US friends say appellation is the US equivalent. His ora instead of ore for adult males or boku for youth such as Boku no Hero Academia and other particle uses are unique to him in Dragon Ball, except for one other character who speaks like him, Chi Chi. It's because Chi Chi uses the same speech patterns that the reader slash watcher could recognize her in the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai while Goku couldn't. Ub is the character with the most similar speech pattern afterwards, with Oida as his default pronoun, which is even more rural because Ub is an islander and lives far away and has more of a dialect. This is one detail we don't really get, as when Goku turns into a Super Saiyan he talks in a more standard Japanese, showing the change within Goku even further. Goku goes back to speaking like his normal self after he exits the chamber with Gohan, showing mastery over the form. Speech Bubble Symbolism Something that may be lost to you while reading the manga is the symbolism behind the speech bubbles. Villains and heroes have distinct bubbles to show their alliances. Goku and the rest of the heroes talk in rounded speech bubbles, while the villains have angular ones. Some characters, such as Vegeta and Piccolo, keep their angular speech bubbles even after they become good guys. And on top of that, all Super Saiyans have angular speech bubbles in order to show the change into a darker, stronger power. Until Goku and Gohan show their perfected Super Saiyan state, where the speech bubbles go back to being rounded. Vegeta is the only one that keeps the angular speech bubbles. Dragon Ball VR there have been a surprising number of Dragon Ball VR projects over the years. Perhaps the first one was Dragon Ball Z VR Versus. There were two versions of this game, one played with normal joysticks and buttons, and one that used sensor controls. I will talk about this game more later on. Years later, a tech demo for the Sega Saturn was shown off that utilized a complex VR system. It was never released publicly, and it seems to only have been a tech demo. Then there's Dragon Ball Z for Connect, which isn't really VR, obviously, but I had to include it since it seemed like the next step forward. Then there was a bot's new Dragon Ball VR headset, which contained a series of minigames using both AR and VR. You attached these little things to your hands, and you could shoot Kamehamehas and stuff. There was a Dragon Ball VR showcase during the Dragon Ball Battle Hour, where you played as Gohan fighting Cell and the Cell Juniors, using the Kakarot graphics. Finally, at VR Zone Shinjuku, there is a Dragon Ball VR fighting game, a 4-player battle royale, where you can shoot Key Blast, Rapid Fire Key Blast, and Kamehamehas. I think that's everything, but this was one of the hardest subjects to find. Hopefully, as VR becomes more widely explored, we'll get a proper VR game in the future. Resurrection of F Manga As Dragon Ball Super manga readers know, Resurrection of F was skipped over in the manga. But why is that? Well, we gotta remember that Dragon Ball Super began very quickly after Resurrection F came out. ROF came out in April 2015, and just three months later in July, Dragon Ball Super began. As part of the promotion for the movie, Toyotaro was tasked with covering the first half of the film in manga form. When Super began and Toyotaro was assigned as the artist, he wasn't exactly looking forward to covering the material he had just covered a few months prior, so the arc was skipped over entirely. This gave the manga a chance to be ahead of the anime for a few months, and as we know, the anime caught up and it ended way before the manga even reached the end of the tournament of power. So yes, there is a manga version of Resurrection F, it's just incomplete. Who came first, Vegito or Gogeta? This entry refers to how in chapter 503, released on January 24th, 1995, the chapter where Goku and Vegeta first fight Super Buu and fuse into Vegito, the next chapter blurb reads, Gogeta is born, instead of Vegito. In the next chapter, Vegito is given his proper name, but why was he called Gogeta in the last issue? The film came out two months later, on March 4th, 1995, so the movie had to be in production already. It was because of that movie that Akira Toriyama had the idea to fuse these two together. 
it. But since the movie was already going to use the name Gogeta, Toriyama changed it to Vegito. The movie may have released later, but in a way, Gogeta did indeed come first. Formula 1 Goku at the time of Dragon Ball's publication in Shonen Jump, Ayrton Senna was an extremely popular Formula 1 racer. For the McLaren team, Shonen Jump became a sponsor for the racing team. As Dragon Ball fans know, Akira Toriyama loves vehicles, as they have always been a part of his manga's DNA. This stems from his father having owned an auto shop named Toriyama Motors. When Shonen Jump teamed up with McLaren, there was a huge push from the magazine to include more Formula 1 content, including original stories by the mangaka of the time, and even a poster from Akira Toriyama with Goku and his friends in the car. In 1999, Akira Toriyama was flown to Germany for one of the team's races, and met Senna himself, to which he made a mini-manga about. The four-page manga was named Battleman F1 Germany Sports Report, where Akira Toriyama recounts his travels to Germany in a journalistic manner. He also drew multiple pieces of Dragon Ball Formula 1 art. Resurrection of F Future Trunks Edition this was an extended version of Resurrection F that aired during the Goku Black arc in Japan. It added around 15 minutes of new animation as prelude to the movie, framed as future Trunks reading a book and recounting the events of the Frieza saga, with Trunks getting fuel for the time machine. It has never been released in home media. Toy censors the movies. In 2018, Toy Animation released new Blu-ray sets of the 13 Dragon Ball Z movies. The release was advertised as unedited, even explaining in the Blu-ray jacket that parts of the footage and dialogue in this product are not considered appropriate for today's audiences, but it is being presented in its original form out of respect for its historical significance. Even so, all instances of the middle finger, particularly in movies 11 and 12, were censored. Because of this, Toy issued recalls and refunds, as well as apologized. There were other changes to the release, including adding finishing touches to the animation. This wasn't the only time Toei apologized during the Blu-ray release though, as they apologized earlier for flipping the artwork for the first Cooler movie. Dragon Ball Hoshi This is another Dragon Ball hoax, though not nearly as popular as AF. While we can't be sure where it began, in the early 2010s, YouTube videos claiming to be a new Dragon Ball series began to appear online. These clips used footage from Dragon Ball Heroes commercials, Ultimate Tenkaichi, and Dragon Ball Online. They didn't last as long as the AF rumors, but lasted long enough to spread around as real. Of course, many years later, now that we have Dragon Ball Super, we know it wasn't. Thanks for watching everyone, that was a whole another hour of the Dragon Ball Iceberg. I still have a bunch of entries to do, and it's gonna be really cool to see it all completed once I'm done. I don't think I'll go beyond one other part, but every time I research, I just keep finding more and more stuff. As always, a thank you to the patrons of the channel. Patreons got to watch this video and other videos early, and I am also going to begin doing patron-only audio dramas, which eventually will come to YouTube, but for now, they'll be patron-exclusive. Either way, Thank you to the Patreons, Evan Webb Stewart, Dennis Brockman, Lost Saiyan 997, Orange Crimsicle, Sunbloom the Flowergen, Chris Macareno, Yo Mama 420, Mao Lick, Daddy, Cyber Samurai, Beastie Man 420, Faisal Alsheref, Akko, Xanos, D Man for Life, Marlon Gonzalez, Blaze 9526, Crazed PlayStation CK, The Main Finn, Free Flow Highway, Shane K, True Lightning Striker, Ghost 1571, Kaiser Jirachi, Trench Rules, D Man Plays 22, Jim G, Jerome Foster, Saliel Paranjape, Keith Grimes, The Legendary Warrior, and The Real Samuel Randall. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the Patreon and helping me make better videos and get them out faster. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Look forward to the next part of the iceberg, and until we meet again, see ya!